Now, what's fun is, and you'll see this in this evening's homework, is where they give you something like this. Where they tell you that it's a 45-45-90 triangle, however they choose to do that with marks of congruency or um, giving you the values, the angle measurements like that, or um, telling you that the base angle is congruent, whatever. But you can conclude that this is a 45-45-90 triangle. It is a right isosceles triangle. But <clears throat> we now have that the length of one of the legs is 3, square root 2. We now have that the length of the leg is 3 square root 2. So what is the length of my other leg? 3 square root 2. 3 square root 2, because they are always congruent in a 45-45-90 triangle. But we have to figure out the length of the hypotenuse. Just follow the rule of whatever the leg is. You're going to take that value and you're going to multiply it by the square root of 2. So you're going to have to take this value, 3 square root 2, and you're going to have to multiply it by the square root of 2. So I do not want to see your final answer on a test being 3 square root of 2, which is the length of the leg. Okay, that's the leg. You need to take that value and you need to multiply it by the square root of 2. That's how you get the hypotenuse's length. So you will take that and multiply it by the square root of 2. Well, you should know how to multiply radicals. You have one here and one there. What's the number on the outside? What's the coefficient of this um, radical in black ink? It's just one. So what are the outside members multiplied together? What's their product? Three. It's just three, because three times one is just three. Then, <clears throat> draw your symbol, multiply the numbers that are inside your radical. What's two times two? Four. Four. So this reads three times the square root of four. That's how you would read that. But really, this is three times what? is 2. So your hypotenuse is actually 6 units long. So for these problems, <clears throat> the hypotenuse won't always have a square root of 2. That's, that, that's not always the case. Okay? <clears throat> these are the... Mm, okay. On these notes... You, you mean, you can, if you're getting, it's getting real crowded, maybe just turn to the next page or something, or, or turn to the back of this, it's getting real crowded. We need to talk about dividing radicals. If I gave you a problem... like that. 12 is equal to 5 times x. How would you solve for the variable? Divide by 5. Okay, divide by 5. None of, you, none of you all just hesitated with that. You just said, oh yeah, I know, because you've done this so many times. You see that it's 5 times x, so you do the inverse operation, which is division, by that same value. And so yes, x is 12 divided by 5. Now, we're going to do the same exact thing, but maybe we're going to have a different coefficient. I could give you a problem like this, where it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. However, I give you the hypotenuse length is 12. I give you that the hypotenuse's length is 12. So if you look at the diagram and you mark what you have, well, that's 12 units. So right now, what I have is that 12 units, the hypotenuse, that is whatever the length of the leg is times the square root of 2. Does that make sense? Because you need, you, need, you need to stop if this doesn't make sense, how I wrote this equation. 12, in this, in this example, 12, but it is the hypotenuse. 
And for 45, 45, 90 triangles, the hypotenuse is whatever the short leg is times square root of 2. So I just wrote 12 is whatever the short leg is times square root of 2. So mathematically, what do I have to do to solve for this variable? Mm -hmm. okay. Y'all didn't hesitate here because this is 5 times x. None of you hesitated. You said, oh, divide by 5 on both sides. It should be the same way here. It should be the same thing. All this is is some variable being multiplied by some value. Here it was x and 5. x being your variable, 5 being that value. So you said, okay, divide by 5. It should be the same exact reaction over here. Oh, easy. How do I get L by itself? I, well, right now it's being multiplied by square root of 2, so just divide by that same number. And those would cancel out, leaving you with just L on the right-hand side. What if you do to one side of the equation, you got to do to the other? This is where dividing <coughs> uh, radicals comes into play. When you have the square root of a fraction, you can rewrite that as the quotient of two radicals. One of the rules of radicals, square roots. But if you have the square root of some fraction, a divided by b, like one half, or three fourths, or seven fifths, whatever, you can actually break it up into two radicals and say that the square root of whatever your numerator is divided by the square root of whatever your denominator is. It's just one of the rules of uh, dividing by radicals. And we've seen this before because we had the square root of a times the square root of b, and, and we know that that's just the square root of a times b. Well, we can do the reverse if we wanted to. If we had the square root of x times y, we could break that up and say that this is the square root of x times the square root of y. It's the same thing with division. Okay? So we, we've seen similar things to this. Well, <clears throat> there's one rule about radicals, is you can't have a radical in the denominator of a fraction. So if you were to have something like this, the square root of a divided by the square root of b, and whatever a and b are, that's fine. But you can't have this. So what is the only value that we can multiply by and not change the value of a fraction? What's the only number we can multiply by and not change the value? It's 1. Okay? It's called the multiplicative identity, meaning when you multiply by 1, it's just itself. Right? We've talked about that before, because what is the, um, what is the, uh, the addition identity? Zero, right? So 1 is the multiplicative identity, because you can multiply 1 by anything, and it would just give itself. That's the thing about 1. It doesn't change the value when you're multiplying. The same with 0 when you add things. You can add 0 all day long. It's not going to change it. So. Anyways, we can multiply that fraction by 1. It will not change the value. However, 1 comes in many different sizes, shapes, and forms. 1 is the same thing as 2 divided by 2, right? 1 is the same thing as... 7 divided by 7. 1 is the same thing as x divided by x, or maybe the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 7. Whenever you divide something by itself, it is 1. So 1 comes in many different uh, sizes and shapes. So I'm going to multiply by 1. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent 1 as the square root of b divided by the square root of b. The reason I'm saying d a square root of b is some square root of b is because that is my denominator. It's my denominator. And so <clears throat> when you have the radic a radical in the bottom as the denominator, you need to multiply top and bottom by whatever radical is in the bottom. 
So I'm going to write that out. Multiply top and bottom of fraction, numerator and denominator. Multiply top and bottom of fraction by the radical in the bottom. And the whole reason I wanted to explain this is because it's legit. Like, you're not changing the value of that fraction when we do that. Because whenever you multiply a fraction by, like, one of these, it's, it's just one. We're not changing the value. What's going to happen is you're going to have the square root of A times, <coughs> excuse me, A times B. You're going to have the square root of that. That's normal. However, on the bottom, you're going to have the square root of b times b. What's b times b? Well, how, can I, how else could I represent that? What? Okay, that's what okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just asking, what is b times b? It's just b squared. Well, what's the square root of something squared? It's, it's just itself. So all of this, square root of b times square root of b, that will just give you b. And now, this is a rational number. This is called rationalizing a, uh, sorry, rationalizing the denominator. You can't have the square root as a denominator. So what you do is you multiply top and bottom by whatever the denominator is. And that rationalizes the denominator. The whole reason this is very important, you know how to divide radicals and simplify them, is because of this right here. Technically, the correct answer is 12 divided by the square root of 2. That, that's what the answer is. However, you can't have a square root in the bottom. So we need to take this 12 square root of 2 and we need to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by 1, essentially. But by doing, but <clears throat> it's not going to look like 1. I'm going to multiply top and bottom of the fraction by the radical in the bottom. What's the radical in the bottom? Square root of 2. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. Well, this fraction that I'm multiplying by, square root of 2 divided by square root of 2, that's just 1. I'm not changing the value at all. So that equals 12 square root 2. That's, that's what the numerators multiplied are. 12 times square root 2. What's my uh, denominator now? It's just 2. I know, and I'm sorry, but we're not done yet. Because this reads 12 square root of 2 divided by 2. But it's, sometimes your numerator may be a radical, but it's not. It's not always going to be. Sometimes it can just be a pretty nice whole number. So, just whatever, whatever, you're, whatever you're given. In this case, we're given a nice whole number. So what is 12 square root of 2 divided by 2? If I have 12 of something and then I'm dividing that by 2, how many do I have? 6. So now I have 6 square root of 2. All of that to say, the length of my leg is 6 square root of 2. <clears throat> so do not get in this habit of when you're dealing with 45, 45, 90 triangles, do not get in the habit of thinking, oh, the hypotenuse is always going to have the square root of 2 in it. That's not the case at all. Here, it's a whole number. That happens where you have a, a right isosceles and its hypotenuse is, is, is some whole number. That can happen in, in real life. And so now, in that, if this is a whole number, then our legs are going to have the square root of 2 involved. Uh, let's take a little break.